Hi there, welcome into the BTI podcast. You're here for a very special episode. You know, I always knew that I wanted to interview my partner and my boss and my friend, Ethan Southern. He is the other host on this podcast. And after we interviewed Jared Snyder, he asked for the honor and the privilege to interrogate, uh, I mean, interview uh, Ethan in whatever episode we wanted to feature him in. And so this is that episode. I hope you enjoy. All right, Jared, here you go, buddy. I get to be a real interviewer this time? <laughs> That's right. You know the difference between you and me? What's that? I make this shirt look good. <sighs> We all know Ethan Southern as the route man guy, but Ethan, tell us more about the business and how you got into it. Yeah. So the way everything got started uh, was really, I got out of college. Um, I was uh, working for a different company uh, right out of school. Uh, I was uh, end up going actually working for Baldwin County. Uh, that's uh, on the Gulf coast. Uh, I was working as a GIS analyst there. Uh, a part of the work that I was doing uh, was just with geography. If you never heard of GIS, it stands for Geographic Information Systems. Uh, it's basically computerized mapping. That's what what, what I did my first job. Uh, after that, I ended up getting a, a, a job with a private entity company out of Birmingham, Alabama, moved up here. Uh, after a while, uh, that's not what I was wanting to do. So I started doing some side consulting. And I started a company called Keat Consulting Services. Uh, Keat is actually a combination of my wife's name and my name. My wife is Kiri, K-E-R-I, and then my name, Ethan, E-T. Uh, I wanted to start something that sounded a little bit older than a 24-year-old would be. So that's where I started uh, with that name. So uh, I, my first domain name was actually Keat Consulting Services, LLC. Dot com. So that was a little long. So uh, we shortened it to uh, KCS GIS. Uh, and that's what we went with uh, from there. So um, after that time, that was really 1999 that I started doing a little bit of side consulting. But 2001, I formed the company, Key Consulting Services. And then in 2008, uh, we had an opportunity to purchase a company. Uh, one of my developers, Jack Populorum, he was doing some side consulting. Uh, at the time, just some uh, moonlight work, which I had no problems with, but he approached me uh, with an opportunity. He was doing some uh, work for a company here uh, based in Pelham, Alabama. They were doing a uh, some software called RouteMan. And after I took a look at it, first thing I noticed, it was a misnomer. There was nothing about routing whatsoever in RouteMan. Uh, it was just basically uh, you know, some software to keep up with invoices and payments. That's really all it was. Uh, and then it was working off the IPACs at that time. So it was a very limited uh, piece of software, but very powerful at the time. So we had an opportunity to purchase it. Jack asked me if I wanted to buy it. I said, well, I will, but I want a partner in it. And uh, he said, sure. So we ended up purchasing that company. We had an opportunity to go ahead and get started. We had a company by the name of Harmon Brothers. They were actually put down money on a deposit. The company was sold. They refunded that deposit because they weren't sure, they being the other company, uh, that they were going to continue to stay in business. Uh, we were able to reach out to Harmon Brothers, talk to them, tell them we were purchasing it. And that was our first company as Key Consulting Services, but doing business really as Route Man. So that's how everything got started. Very cool. So I know that you're involved in other business ventures. You have, um, you know, an entre entrepreneurial spirit. And Easy for you to say. <laughs> Uh, tell everybody uh, some of the other businesses that you're involved in. Yeah, so I, I mentioned about Key Consulting Services. So that GIS side of the business still flourishing, still doing a lot of good work. Uh, we're predominantly in the government space, so we do a lot of work for uh, counties, for engineering departments uh, inside of that. We also do it for cities, local governments. Uh, and a large part of what we do uh, here in the state of Alabama, and that's more regionalized, where Route Man is across the world. Uh, the GIS business is really localized uh, here in Alabama, and then we tip over into Mississippi, Tennessee, and also Georgia a little bit. Uh, 
so that's the uh, work that we do on that side of it. We do development work, very similar to what we do with RouteMan. And that was the reason we were able to take RouteMan uh, so much further uh, was that we had that background of mapping uh, to be able to, uh, you know, be able to tie everything back together. So it was it really dovetailed to be able to tie it all together. On top of that, I have a, a, another business partner, a small business as well, that we do some commercial real estate. Uh, we lease that out. So not too much. We have about two, 22,000 square feet of office space uh, that we lease out to people. Well, sounds like your next business venture should be starting an ice plant down that way. <laughs> well, you know, there has been some consideration of that uh, just in the industry and serving uh, the ice industry. We, I, I just love business in general. I think even though the mechanism uh, that I found myself or at least the avenue that I found myself in business was going down the GIS uh, route first, that I, I really think I would have found business one way or the other. Uh, I just enjoy talking with different men um, and women about their businesses and uh, what they do for a living and how they do it. So I, I don't know that my love is necessarily for GIS or if it's necessarily just for the ice industry. It's it's for business in general and just dealing with people on a day to day basis and trying to improve what they do. So I know that you have kind of toyed with the idea of starting your own ice company or something like that. What would be um, the thing that's holding you back from that? A big pile of cash. <laughs> <laughs> very, very large pile of cash. Uh, it's, you know, I've, again, I've been very interested in, in, in ice and just the business side of it. I love the cleanliness of it. I love the structure. I've been in so many ice plants. I've seen so many ways that it's done well. And I have to say, I mean, I've, I've seen very few places that it's done poorly. And I know on, on the podcast that we do, we harp on the IPIA and the rules and, and all the guidelines that are out there. But I think that's the reason that every place that I've went into, I feel like I could lick the floor and not pick up a germ. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been really nice uh, to be able to go in and see. Would you recommend See that cleanliness? Would I would you recommend never that? recommend licking a floor no matter where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how much cleaning we've done. <laughs> well, y'all have done such a good job, but I, I, I consider it. But I mean, the, the amount of investment that goes into it and the amount of work uh, that has to be done uh, is is absolutely incredible. And I will say that uh, we you know what we've what we've done and the software side of it. Uh, I, I, I do thoroughly enjoy uh, the side of the business at a moment. Well, Ethan, it's been fun to see what Route Man's become back from when we started using it in 2010 from those dinky little palm pilots that slid in <laughs> the cradle with the printer that were always, you know, an issue to what it is now and, and the amazing capabilities Route Man has. So don't give up that entrepreneurial spirit. Keep growing, keep expanding, keep uh, looking for new challenges to solve. Yeah, absolutely. Well, every bit of it, you know, has been customer driven. You know, we, we, we've just been there to try to, uh, no, I mean, we may fail, we'll find innovations, but, you know, really the creativity and the need and the, the desires of, you know, customers, I, I really think that that's, that that's, that's going to be in any type of business that you do. I think it's the same thing for you and your business that you do, Jared. I mean, anything that you can find to improve the product, the delivery mechanisms, whatever it is, you know, purchasing a route management software, you know, all those different things, you know, going into your warehouse and uh, basically automated palletizing, all, all those things, you know, go into it. So um, I appreciate it. And I don't think I'm going to give that up. My wife always tells me she knew uh, pretty much from the day that she met me that I was a uh, a salesperson. I wasn't sure how to take that originally. So, uh, but you know, she she told me that she she knew that I had an entrepreneurial uh, spirit, and you know, I, I think that's ingrained in me. Well, the the new one we've been toying around to our office that we'd like Route Man to add is a tip feature. You know, I got out of my Uber today and said, how much tip do you want to leave? <laughs> my drivers would like to see if they can add a five, 10 or 20% tip to themselves after they write the ticket. Yeah, I, I bet. I bet. Well, we, we do have a wish list, so we'll, we'll put that one uh, just below the wish list. So. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Jared, I think it's time for us to, you know, ask Ethan his first icebreaker question. I know, um, I'm excited and scared. 
<laughs> we're going to go ahead and pull up a picture to refer to here. So I don't know if you can make that picture out, Ethan. I can. I can. So for all your hard work, who are all these people in the picture? My goodness, it's it's really kind of hard to see here. I see Paul. I think I see Eric from Iceworks. Yep. Uh, I was, see, is that David? Yep. Klingman? Yep. I, 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 the others, it's it's really hard for me to make out. I apologize. Obviously, I see a, 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 a stud guy there in the middle just to the right. So. Hey, you're, but you're, you're standing next to me, Ethan. It's okay. <laughs> oh, is, is that is that what it is? So uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> all I remember is being so cold. I mean, I, whatever I look like there, I, goosebumps, I was so, so cold. So... Um, but yeah, it, it, that was an absolutely a blast of a day to be with you guys in misery. Do you remember where we were? Uh, yeah, in California. So, uh, we, uh, Huntington beach, is that right? That is correct. And we'll be back there for a nice convention uh, in the near future. All right. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to freeze again. <laughs> yeah, so this is. This so is my profile picture. picture uh, and we figured maybe you'd uh, tell us where you were doing this. Yeah, this this is another thing that was related to the ice industry. So uh, one of the, the I guess the good thing about uh, sometimes being the boss is you get an opportunity uh, to be able to uh, pull rank and go to a couple of conferences. <laughs> so uh, the Western Ice Association uh, was uh, held there in Hawaii. Uh, this was a uh, turtle, I believe it's Turtle Bay uh, on the uh, the North Shore. And uh, my first ever uh, full surfing lesson. Uh, the other one, I have to say, was a surfing lesson, but it was so cold. I didn't hear anything he was saying. I was just trying to uh, <laughs> uh, keep my teeth from chattering. But th this was such a great time. Uh, I was able to take my wife and um, it was it was an absolute blast. And, uh, you know, not the worst form. At least I look athletic on the board. I wasn't very good. But I do think I got up the first time, and then it was a struggle bus after that. <laughs> Used up all your good moves on the first up. Huh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right, Ethan, you mentioned your wife. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about your family. We have a few pictures to display as you talk us through them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, you could see uh, just to my right uh, there, uh, far left of the picture, that's uh, Bailey. She is now a sophomore at Auburn uh, University, so uh, the loveliest village on the plains. So uh, War Eagle to everybody out there. And uh, my son is in the middle, Cooper. Uh, he is an eighth grader now. He's 14. Uh, Ella, uh, she's there in the purple. Uh, she is a senior this year at Thompson uh, high school. So that's a, a school here. We live in the city of Alabaster and then my lovely wife, uh, Kiri. So, and uh, I'd already mentioned uh, spelling her name K-E-R-I. So if you ever hear the inflection, I do say Kiri, not Carrie. So, uh, but that is her. All right. And we know that you have a deep love of your Auburn Tiger Tigers. So I guess this is just a picture of you guys on one of the day, one of the few days that they won, I guess, maybe. <laughs> well, this is from March Madness. If we were able to uh, zoom out a little bit, this uh, uh, in Birmingham last year, Auburn was able to, uh, you know, make the, uh, the, the tournament and uh, it was here in Birmingham. So my wife and I were able to go up. Uh, I had a friend that uh, was able to score me some tickets. Uh, we were able to go up and uh, enjoy watching a basketball win. But unfortunately, that was the first round. They ended up getting booted the second round. But anytime we can war eagle, uh, we're going to war eagle. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this pride and joy right here. So uh, these these kids, this was actually during a, a good family friends of ours that got married. Uh, so they. Both my daughters were able to uh, help with the wedding and my son uh, there with his uh, suspenders on. So, uh, <laughs> again, just on the far left, uh, that would be Ella, then Cooper and then Bailey. Yeah. So this picture here, this is Ella. Uh, as you can see, uh, I have a COVID mask and I was trying to cover up that bare face chin that I had, apparently. So <laughs> I, I do remember wearing your, during COVID, anytime you put that mask on, uh, having a beard, it would just uh, pull and it was uh, super itchy. But uh, this is Ella. Uh, she had to have been, I guess, in ninth grade. 
uh, or 10th grade at, the, at this time. So, uh, but volleyball has uh, really been a part of our life a great deal. Uh, we did a lot of softball early on uh, in my daughter's uh, career. I coached a lot. Maybe that's why they're not playing any longer. Uh, but they are really uh, have taken the volleyball. And uh, again, she's a senior right now, and they're ranked number four uh, in 7A here in the state of Alabama. So she's on a, a good team, and she's uh, what they call an outside hitter on the left side. So uh, she tries to get kills, and, uh, uh, and she does. Nice. Yeah, my son uh, continued to uh, – I thought I hung up the cleats on coaching. I've talked on a couple of the podcasts about doing that, but uh, I've engaged back, and uh, this is, uh, I believe, a year – about a year and a half, two years ago – uh, just uh, one of the tournaments that we won. So uh, my son, he's a lefty, plays first base, also uh, pitches, and uh, just a, a joy to be around. He's uh, one of my best friends. <laughs> Very good. And uh, didn't want to leave out the last uh, part of your family. I found one photo with one of your uh, your dogs. So tell us. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, this is uh, this is Daphne. She is a cuckoo for cocoa puffs. So she is <laughs> absolutely crazy, but uh, a joy of our life uh, as well. So, uh, and we have another uh, golden doodle. His name is Winston. He's a uh, he's white and uh, he's 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 awesome. So, and uh, this is one of the few times uh, being on a boat that I was actually able to uh, sit back and chill out. Uh, normally, I'm always in captain mode, so I have to <laughs> have to be up manning the helm. But uh, this is uh, just on a boat, uh, Lake Martin, so I'd love to be there. So who was driving that day? I don't even want to really think about it. Uh, <laughs> more than likely, uh, more than likely was Cooper. He got his license last okay. year, and I think this was kind of at the end of the year. So he was able to go in and, uh, you know, he was able to uh, – captain the vessel so let him i'm sure i did not sit there very long so guarantee i didn't <laughs> all right so ethan we've already talked about sports quite a bit but i did want to ask you because you enjoy asking uh our guests uh, who is the best athlete in your family well i know i know my family well i assume my family may watch this but um <laughs> Well, it's funny you start here. So, I, I mean, is that was is that was that y'all's assumption as well? I, I mean, we're we're just we're just uh, <laughs> you know putting this out there. I mean, you made the papers. Uh, I did, yeah. I did, I did, and this was a good looking backhand uh, volley that I had. Well, <laughs> I, <clears throat> is that textbook strategy or uh, you know form? It's pretty right good. There? I should be I should be bending my knees a little bit, so oh, a okay. little bit more, but. No, it's it, that's that's pretty decent form. I got my eye on the ball, right? So that's what you always <laughs> say in anything that you do. Well, I, I, I have to answer it this way. I mean, and, and my wife, my family, um, and and I guess I've said that you know to be good at the athletics, you have to you have to hover on that border of cocky and confidence. And sometimes I find myself on the the, the cocky side, but you know you you have to have confidence in yourself. Uh, and I would, I would, I think you guys would agree. Even in business, anything that we do, you have to have confidence in yourself. Otherwise, it's hard to uh, have success in it. But all of my children, uh, they are really athletic. Uh, anything that they've tried and they put a little bit of time into, they've had that ability uh, to be able to do. Now, this is a, a few years later in my life, so <laughs> a, few, uh, a little bit older. But again, you look at the split step, I have to say, I always tell anybody, you may not be athletic, but you can at least get in an athletic position. So, <laughs> you know, get, get on the balls of your feet, be ready to move. So. You make and, it look uh, good for a picture oh, anyway. Wow. I didn't even know this one existed. This is a pickleball. So, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you, you can see my child over there is like, really, you're so extra. Yeah. Why, why, are, you try, why yeah. are you trying this hard? So that's it, Bailey, yeah, I believe. It looks so. like somebody is more committed to this game than the other person. <laughs> oh. One one thousand percent. There's not a single one of my, my my family members that wouldn't say that I I go the extra mile when it comes to athletics uh, or <laughs> anything in a competitive form. That's for sure. No, I had I not seen this picture. Yeah, I think we have one more with yep. Cooper uh, watching you take a swing. 
So again, I, I, I'm pleased that at least this picture, I've got my my feet in the right position and <laughs> ready to go. And again, I have to say, Cooper, when you watch this, are you prepared, son? You you are not ready. You're just staring at dad. So I mean, He's you're not ready to do podcast. I like it. <laughs> Holly, always a coach. That's right? crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for letting us have some fun with you on those. So, Ethan, as you keep growing your business, how does going to different regional events for both the IPIA and the different regional ice associations benefited uh, Routeman? I'd have to say this: the lifeblood of what we do. You know, going to these shows, getting in, in entwined with uh, the regional shows and the IPIA, just again, really, the best way I can say is the lifeblood. That opportunity to be able to go in, meet with these people in a much smaller setting uh, is fantastic. I, I highly advise anybody that thinks that you get everything at the IPIA, you, you're going to get a lot. You're going to get uh, be able to see a ton of vendors, a ton of folks. But something about the regional shows just allows you to get a lot more personable uh, at those shows. You know, a lot of times when we go to those shows, we're really not even demoing what we do. Uh, we're just discussing, we're learning more about them, their business, their family, and, you know, just being able to get uh, tied to them a little bit tighter. Well, we certainly appreciate uh, Routeman's involvement in all the meetings. It's uh, always good to have suppliers there and, you know, appreciate the time you spend with all of us. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a commitment, you know, especially when you've got, uh, you know, typically two per uh, you know, regional association, but it has paid off in spades as far as just our relationships, uh, you know, being able to get out there uh, into it. So it, it's been our pleasure. All right. So Ethan, one of the questions that I wanted to ask that I feel like I know the answer to somewhat, but I just think that some folks out there who watch the different content, the different videos that we make on the Route Man channel would ask is, what is a hob sauce? What is going on with that? And what does it have to do with Route Man? I, I would have to say uh, we're still trying to figure that out uh, in, inside of Route Man as well. So um, what is a hob sauce or who is hob sauce or why hob sauce or why even do something that crazy? So, um, All right. you know, how about, how about this? Let's pause for a second before you hurt yourself and we'll... Okay. We'll go ahead and share a, a short clip for anyone who hasn't seen a hob sauce video. And right. that'll give you a second to think about what you want to say about <laughs> it. In the world, hob sauce. Why does my coffee look like paint? I love the smell of paint in the morning. Let's get started. Oh my goodness. Well, so when it comes to uh, our sense of humor, um, it may not be, uh, well, I'd say the cup of tea, but maybe even the cup of paint for everybody, <laughs> right? So uh, we, it, it's something that we came up with that we enjoy. And I really don't want to peel back the onion so far as to like trying to figure out Clark Kent and Superman. You know, I mean, we, we don't want to uh, do the unveiling here, but I think you can tell by the wig, you can tell that the sense of humor that we have is bent uh, here, but it's something that makes <laughs> us laugh. So we have turned that into something that we hope uh, has made at least one other person outside of Routeman laugh as well. <laughs> Maybe we should ask Jared what he thinks. Just like any company, you always have a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting thing is the person who plays that character may be the most reserved in some ways in the in the office and he puts on that wig and watch out and it just becomes very <laughs> entertaining well and then we have a producer of it as well so uh, we, and we, we sh we're supposed to have another episode or two coming uh, down the, the down the, down the pike at some point so hopefully we'll be able to get that out and uh, complete not necessarily the story but you know, keep talking about it. And uh, anyway, we enjoy doing it. So it's, it's, it's been fun to, to, to kind of play uh, a little bit. Let's go in a different direction for a moment. Who would you say has had uh, the greatest impact on your life? I, I, man, that would be tough to identify just one person. I, I think I'd, 
I think I'd really like to answer it. And since I'm the interviewee and, and I get to go whichever direction I want to go, I'm going to. No, no, this I'm, is not presidential uh, politics here. You no, don't. no, but but it is. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would have to say from a business side. Uh, well, I, I just have, to, you know, obviously my parents have been big for me. But when it comes into influential from business and giving me a, a a lot of confidence. There was a, a, a gentleman, he was actually in the insurance business. Uh, unfortunately, he's passed away now, but his name was Jerry Burnett. Uh, he was working for State Farm, but I went to church with him. Uh, and when he knew I was getting into business, I was able to talk to him about kind of getting out of what I was doing, wanting to start my business. And he was just right there along with me, giving me advice. Not that he knew anything about GIS, but he knew how to run a successful business. He knew how to approach it. So he gave me a lot of good advice uh, on that. And that was very impactful for me to be able to get started and, and do it in a Christian way and uh, get advice from him on that. From a personal sense, uh, there, there's, there's, I mean, really there's, there's no equal and that's my wife. Um, and just, you know, her giving me the foundation and, you know, helping lead me to Christ, you know, I, I'm indebted to her the rest of my life. And, uh, that from that personal sense, there's there's nobody better. And I, I would say the way that I approach business, I know this is an inanimate object, but I talk a lot about tennis. But the playing tennis and going through that and the 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 struggles that are there, it's an extremely difficult sport uh, mentally and physically on your body. But, you know, what it allowed me to learn Uh, being on that court, you're by yourself and you have to find ways to achieve what you're looking for. And there's not success uh, in every point. There's not success in every match, Uh, but you you have to find ways to succeed and and give your best because if you take off a point, you know, everybody sees that, you know, if you're a, a lineman or you could go in baseball, you could go 0 for 5, drop two fly balls and still win the game and, and your team still wins, but you didn't have individual success. You can't do that in tennis. Uh, and there's just a lot that I owe to that. So sorry to be a little bit long winded on that, but that's, it's tough for me just to isolate and just give, give credit to one. Jeff, do you hear all sorts of sports analogies all day at the office? Is everything you do tie somehow everything. to tennis or sports? <laughs> Everything. No, it's it's really not. That's a fair question. Um, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. does come out in conversations, maybe when you wouldn't expect it, or some of our um, networking calls where we're talking to other folks over Zoom or Teams or something like that. It does come out. It's a, a part of, you know, a big part of Ethan's life. So it, it bleeds over, I guess. Well, you can't take the coach out of the person, apparently. <laughs> no, you can't. And I have to say, and I use the pun here that, you know, if you talk about sports and you find a team, it's a nice icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> that bordered on the dad joke level there. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I've got more jag- dad jokes. I mean, I could tell you the tomato joke, but anyway, people aren't ready <laughs> for that. Another podcast. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So you apparently have a cold plunge protocol that you do? Uh, well, I was until the machine broke on me. So, uh, yeah, the cold plunge, I, you know, I don't particularly care anything for the cold. But I have to say the invigoration that you get when you do that. And uh, apparently when you get a hairstyle like that, you can <laughs> display it to the world. I was going to so, say, yeah. <laughs> You set up that picture perfectly without knowing what picture we were going. I did. Um, And and again, going back to, wow, it it gets cold. I have to say, if you've never tried it, uh, no, I'm no medical. Uh, Do not take medical advice from me. (laughs) Consult your physician. But if you have not tried it, if you can get that water between 50 to 59 degrees, give yourself five minutes, go through it. That five minutes of pain and a little bit of suffering that you go through is going to make your next four to six hours improve. And that that's the reason I enjoy doing it. This was my first. Uh, well, my first iteration was actually with a customer of mine. Uh, I went and did a, a, a jackknife uh, into the lake with him. And I probably... <laughs> I don't know how, uh, I don't want to be sacrilegious and say I walked on water, but I got out of that very quickly, uh, that situation. (laughs) 
But here, uh, once I got into this, this was my first iteration. Now I have something slightly different, but it's it's really fantastic therapy and it, it just clears the mind and uh, it, it's in, it's improved my life. So I'm, I'm hoping to get my machine back up and going here shortly. Well, we, had, <laughs> we had one other cold plunge picture <clears throat> that we felt like we needed to share and that's uh, kind of implying a little bit of... Um, I, I don't know. Is this punishment for Cooper or is this uh, child abuse? What, what so, self punishment? Well, you can see his face and this is on the better side of it. This was uh, after the, he, he's calmed down at this point. But uh, <laughs> anyway, he he's still learning what it takes to uh, kind of push yourself. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know many uh, 13 for he was 13 at this time. I don't know many 13 years old that will willingly get into there. Even there takes a little bit of the, the crowbar from daddy on uh, <laughs> uh, prying him emotionally to get into the into there. But uh, yeah, you can see here, uh, Cooper's a stud. I mean, I, again, not many 13 year olds going to get in that water, but I say you have to be consistent. Otherwise, it's going to be painful every time you get in if you're inconsistent. So if you can get consistent with the cold plunge, you, you you'll learn to enjoy it ish. Does it, does it have to be a cold plunge in water or can you just be in the ice freezer for a long time uh, reorganizing something? Well, <clears throat> I, I, I can't say the answer to that because I don't want to come across that you guys aren't tough. Uh, I will say, <laughs> as you know, if you put a cold beverage in there for 10 minutes, right, it's not going to be that cold. But you put cold beverage in a tub of ice water, it's going to be cold within... I, whatever podcast we, we did with David Bryant much <laughs> faster. So you, 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 uh, you take that for what it's worth. So. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so uh, during the, at least in the early days of doing your cold plunge, you were really supporting the ice industry because you were buying bags of ice, right? That's right. That's right. How many bags were you buying per day? I, uh, it was on average of two. So it was taking anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds of ice to get the water temperature. When we were coming out of uh, spring into summer, it was taking close to 15 pounds of ice roughly uh, to, to lower that temperature enough because after the evenings is probably in the mid 60s uh, was the uh, water temperature and to get it down around 57 to 58 degrees. That's about how much it would take. So you know, it was very difficult to try to uh, handle that through the summer months. So I had to find a way to uh, put a chiller on it to be able to chill that water down uh, without, you know, dumping the ice in all the time. And it wasn't necessarily even purchasing the ice. It was just the inconvenience having to stop by, pick it up and store it, you know, until the morning. Sounds like he needed a local ice man that would yeah. just drop it by his house, so, you know, on a or if you had your own ice company, you just bring it home from work every day. <laughs> That's right. Well, Jared, if you want to send a driver down here, I'll gladly pay uh, wholesale pricing and uh, let you drop three bags in. <laughs> That's not a problem. The delivery charge might kill you, but we can figure something out. Uh, I bet so. I bet so. <laughs> so, Ethan, going back to um, more work-focused questions or route man-focused questions, uh, I thought we would share a couple pictures from your work with RouteMan and just ask you to talk through um, the team that we have in this picture. This is a, a little bit of a dated picture and not everyone's still part of the team and we have some new members as well, but um, maybe you could describe a little bit about the RouteMan team and the KCS team. Yeah, if I start uh, on the far left of the photo, I have to say this is Jeff pre-beard and pre-carnivore diet. So uh, there's a little extra Jeff uh, right there. That we got. So, uh, but, is that but Jeff is uh, no <laughs> he's definitely slim. <laughs> Jeff is definitely slim down and uh, staying consistent with his diet and everything. So. For, for sure. Then we got Jack Populorum uh, there. So uh, he's uh, my business partner in Route Man and uh, uh, developer, lead developer uh, on the Route Man, Route Man side of things. Um, we've got myself there. 
Uh, still going back row, we got Hunter Steely, uh, which he is a developer of Route Man as well. And uh, those that have seen a, a Route Map, so uh, he handles that and Express, so doing a lot of development. We got Daryl Melt, which is going to be uh, retiring here fairly soon. Uh, right next to him is actually my brother. He works uh, fully on the GIS side of things. Uh, then we got uh, Rusty Ham. Rusty uh, does a little bit of uh, both. So he, he does some route man development and GIS. Robert Cheney that's standing behind him uh, in front in the green is uh, Craig. Both of them, uh, Craig Tuberville, both of them work on the route man side. And Phil Nix, uh, he just retired, but he was in the GIS. Uh, I, I said they were route man. I meant they were in GIS. My bad, Robert and Craig. And then we've got uh, Phil Nix. Uh, again, he just retired. Uh, he was on the GIS side of things. In front, we got Bailey. Uh, she was doing some work uh, before she headed off to college. Uh, and then we got Suzanne Watson. So uh, she does tier one support here and uh, reception work for us. Um, and uh, just a great team. We got several that we've hired uh, since then that uh, we don't have any pitchers, but uh, just a great team overall. So really, really great folks. Mm -hmm. well, nice. You've always had a great crew whenever I've called down to, to have to work with somebody for something. Um, so you have a great group of people that work with you. Well, Jeff can tell you the first thing that we do when we hire people, one of the, well, one of the things we tell them is if you come to work here, you know, things are answering people is and, and putting that off is not that that's a non-starter. So if, if people need help, uh, set down what you have, at least get back to them and say, Hey, I'll reach back to you in a few hours or maybe tomorrow. And most people completely understand that. It's when you go dark and silent on people is when, uh, to me, people get frustrated. So, Absolutely. So I did want to share one other picture. I just kind of wanted to share a glimpse with, uh, with everyone. On, this is the kind of uh, executive or manager that Ethan is. He is hyper involved in a lot of the different things that we do. So he doesn't just send us to set up the booth. He's in there with his uh, sleeves rolled up or no sleeves at all. So he's not out surfing all the time? <laughs> no, not all the time. <laughs> no. I got um, my uh, baseball cap backwards here. I, I mean, I mean business. That's right. You look like you're serious setting up those new ice sensors <laughs> to, uh, you know, check everything out. Yeah, this, this was a extremely fun booth to design. So we went through probably 15, 20 different designs trying to find a way to be able to accurately, you know, be able to demonstrate because we thought about putting an ice box in there, but then you got people sticking their heads in. And, you know, this was just an intriguing way to try to, uh, you know, drum up, you know, kind of what we're doing. So you will be seeing this same booth at the conference uh, this year because uh, it went over swimmingly and, we can't wait to show off some of the new design and, uh, you know, it's going great. So, Ethan, I've been having a great time here with Jeff and I can clearly see why he's your favorite employee. What other attributes of Jeff make him your favorite? Wait a minute. Am I being punked? What's going on here? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, it's obviously his long, luxurious hair. That's really what sets him <laughs> apart from everybody else. Uh, no, Je Jeff is fantastic. So uh, he, he was definitely a, a blessing uh, to our company uh, coming over here. His work ethic, his desire to want to get things right and, and take care of customers. You know, his background is with Publix and Publix. If you're not familiar, their moniker is where shopping is a pleasure. And I have to say that that is it. And he took that to heart. He brought that same a customer pleasing attitude uh, over to the route man side of things. So he's really been fantastic. Uh, you know, as far as a favorite employee, you know, I honestly, it's, I, I'm so appreciative of the, everybody that works here and just the team that we have, you know, every Christmas that we have, you know, I almost get choked up talking to people uh, and maybe Jeff might agree. I, you know, there's there's been a little um, uh, water, you know, slung in my face uh, on, on a uh, time or two there. But, you know, it really is um, it, it is family. I mean, we spend so much time together and the employees that uh, are here. I mean, I, I don't I, to even say employees. It's hard to say that colleagues and, you know, just us working together has been great. Well, Ethan, it's been fun to poke 
poke some questions yeah. your way and kind of put you on the spot. Jared, I hope you've enjoyed. It's been a lot of fun picking his brain and uh, making yeah. him stop and think a little bit. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much for having a, a good attitude and, and letting us just poke some fun at you. We've enjoyed coming at you from an undisclosed location, uh, kind of out of the ordinary. Hope you've enjoyed it. And thank you, Ethan. It's fun yeah, to put you great. on the spot for some questions. And thank you, yeah, Jared, absolutely. For, for being a guest host and coming up with some of the best questions and the pictures. <laughs> Yeah, I really appreciate it, guys. I thought it would be less stress to be asked the questions than you know, be on the side and trying to run everything and put it all together. But I have to say, all our guests, thank you all. Whoever's in the future, in the past, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, but thank you for having me. This was fun to do uh, and, and be on this side for once. Wow. All right. All right. You ready to go? Let's do it. I'm ready. I feel so official. <laughs> you know the difference? Like the difference of what? These shirts? What's that? I make it look good. <laughs> All right, Jared. You ready to take it up a level? How much higher can you get? I'm already chairman of the IPIA, Jeff. Guest host on the BTI podcast. Ooh. Let's do it. Now we're official. All right. Let's do it. There yeah. is a COVID mask in the picture, which probably gives us a... Well, that would mean it's only three, yeah. wait, what, four years, three years ago? Yeah, three years like ago. One. So yeah. I'm, I missed that one pretty bad. Oh, y'all don't have to ask a question. This is y'all's interview. Do you, do you want to ask them or do you want me to ask them? No, I'll ask the question. <laughs> what is a hob sauce? What is that all about? And what does it have to do with route man? Well, quite honestly, we're still trying to figure that out inside of Route Man. What 